Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the ESL Hearthstone Legendary Series. My name is T. Jaws McKinney Sanders, and I'm joined with Dan the Frodan Cho. And we're about to jump into the second semifinal of the day of Group D of the Redemption Tournament. It is going to be between Oskaka and Limujux. That's right. That's right. I'm pretty. In I'm pretty hyped up. I'm intense after that commercial. Yeah. I feel very. Uh, I feel like slaying amped. dragons. Well, I'm going to climb a mountain first. And then slay the dragon. Okay. With my mind. Your mind is powerful. With, sorry, with only my mind. <laughs> Nothing else. <laughs> Thanks for the clarification. And I'm not going to even be holding a dragon as I slay the dragon. Because I wouldn't make a mechanic like that with my weapon. You are G1. <laughs> I'm F1. <laughs> yeah. Well, the winner of this moves on to face Tom60229 in the final match of the day. And that matchup would determine the player who goes on, the eighth player, and the yep. final player of the Redemption <clears throat> Tournament to go on to the Season 2 Legendary Series Land Finals. That's right. Uh, Oskaka, one of the best players in ladder, I believe. I heard the statistic thrown out here back in the C-Story Cup. According to Blizzard, he is the most winning player on ladder. If yeah. you cross-reference a uh, number of games played versus one, after, like, if you measure a threshold amongst the highest percentage of like qualified players, he is the best ladder player in the world. Yeah, that's really impressive stuff. Yeah, it's quite the statistic. Oskaka, of course, means cheesecake in Swedish. And I actually okay. read the entire Wikipedia page about Swedish cheesecake this morning, in preparation. In Swedish. In classic TJ preparation. In Swedish. No, no, in English. Oh. Well, that's. Swedish I don't cheesecake. Think you understand what it means. I think something's lost in the translation. You know, so. Dan, Swedish cheesecake is not like American <clears throat> cheesecake. Oh, it's not. No, it's not layered. So what, you know how there's like then? a graham cracker crust or some type of crust right. on cheesecake, and, it, and it's amazing. Yeah. No, Swedish cheesecake is like, it's just, it's just like Swedish curd custard? cake that's like baked. Oh. And then you just put like jam on top of it. I mean, it's 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 probably similar in taste. But different in texture, and it's not layered. I don't know. The texture means a lot to me for cheesecake. Does it? It means a lot to me for a lot of things. Shirts, blankets, cheesecake. Girlfriends. Girlfriends. Yep. Warlock versus the Hunter. Um, this is going to start off. Now, this is the first time we're being seeing Oskaka today. I'm not sure exactly what is going to be coming out of his department. We're about to find out. And it looks like Oskaka is going to go with the Zoo. Mm -hmm. the zoo against begin. Midrange Hunter. This is this is 2015, guys, I promise. <laughs> this looks like exact. Uh, I guess outside of that Dark Bomb, but if you looked about a year ago, it'd be kind of similar to what you'd see now. Yeah. Now, Oskaka was, actually has the worst record out of any, all 32 players that participated in the Legendary Series this season. 0-6. 0-6? Like, did not win a oh, single it's game. Kaka. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, don't, don't look at me like that. Yeah. So flame imp uh, into knife juggler is pretty powerful. If you want to set up a good implosion. What do you want to say, TJ? Nothing. Okay. I was gonna say he was the, f the quickest player to be eliminated out of any week. Oh, gotcha. I understand. Yeah. Yo and Tieto. Look at that. And I didn't have to read any Wikipedia articles to know what that meant. Most so of my knowledge. Fire. This is... Uh, is well, this aggressive version of the zoo? It could be. We saw a Chalky run. Yeah, it had the Dark Bomb. So the only piece that we're missing here is like Arcane Golems and Wolf Riders. The deck actually worked so out super well for Chalky. Right. He took second in the Redemption Tournament on Friday. In a group B. lot of what cost him was the rogue deck in the end. It ended up having a pretty subpar win rate across the board. He had to play many games with it. In fact, one series he won with it barely. He lost twice. And in the third series, he ended up losing twice with it. Or three times with it. Yeah. Stranglethorn Tiger. Oh, interesting. Ice Fat. 
That's the player. Oh. One of the players that posted in the competitive Hearthstone subreddit. And I he don't actually know why, but whenever you say that, it just it makes me feel like that's how you're you're trying to like rhyme or something. No. He 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 actually posted in the chat the other day. One of our producers sent me a screenshot of Ice Fat. I hope TJ says my name again. In Twitch chat. Ice Fat said that. Oh, I thought I thought they sent you a picture of they sent me a, a of, screenshot. Of fat in like a cup that's frozen. That was speaking. That you you said yeah. You said they sent me a picture of iced fat, and I was like oh. the the person yeah. But then you chatting. paused for like two seconds. TJ, timing dramatic, <laughs> dramatic pause. <laughs> so he tests to see if this is explosive trap, but it sees it's snake trap instead. I have to fight back on the board. Yeah, I'm trying to avoid activating that snake trap at all costs. Fortunately for him, he's got a card called Implosion, which is great against fighting against snakes and traps. Mm -hmm. Or yeah. do you want to set up Imp Gang Boss instead? No, no, I think Implosion might be better because uh, you can guarantee to get the pick off on the freezing trap, so that way the imps will get returned to your hand, and then you even... Uh, also can fight back a little bit on the board for snake traps. Yeah, I think you need to deal with those traps as quick as possible. Right. Does that, that be this? Does that mean this flame imp doesn't really do much? Like it just kind of sits here this turn. Yeah, well, it's still going to be a body eventually. If it's you get so two imps off the implosion, and say you hit the web spinner, then you can guarantee you get yourself the pop on the freezer drive. So this was the worst case scenario and he planned for it. If you feel like you're really good at Hearthstone and you want to roll three or higher, mm -hmm. you can aim for the uh, Haunted Creeper. Yeah. Well, the Houndmaster Haunted Creeper. Oh my. He willingly trades it to the flame up here. That's interesting. It's interesting because Oh! Four well, esports. Well, come on. Let's be real. It actually averaged out to three. Yeah. <laughs> Two to four, and Mazo just said deal three each time. Yeah. Would have been almost the same, except he would have attacked. And of course, if you were Oskaka, the preference would be to have it done the opposite way. Four first, two now. <laughs> Why would he attack into that flame? Why do you think? He's afraid of. Um, he's got to be afraid of. Defender Vargas? Defender Vargas uh, or Direwolf Alpha or some kind of adjacent thing to really make his life complicated. And at this point, you're really not going to win on the snake trap fight. And your opponent might even just be attacking face every single time. Hey, Dan. Yo. Web Spinner got the beast. Yeah. The beast? Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't think we're going to see the beast played. I think we're going to see Animal Companion... Abuse of Sergeant West Spinner before we see the Beast. Yeah. But it got the Beast. I will willing to say I the Beast has a 0% chance of being played before the rest of the hand is played. It's a bold statement, but I like your style. Stranglethorn Tiger, of course. I know a lot about this card. You know a lot about this card? I do. It's a 5-5. Five five. When you play it on the board, it has Stealth. And, uh, it's a beast also. I think that's the important thing. Yeah, it is a beast. The, the important thing about the Strangathorn Tiger is that it's sort of like uh, guaranteed latent there. damage that hides behind stealth. Mm -hmm. You can synergize it with a Houndmaster that sort of curves out okay better if you play it. And then you Houndmaster, you still have two mana to do something else, like a quick shot or a hero power. Yeah. And then um, it also makes sure that kill command in your hand can get live without losing too much tempo by holding a beast in your hand. Yeah. So, so it's it's kind of a good mixture of in the middle of the road. The only thing is that um, sometimes Lothab is just better, so that way you can accomplish what you have on the board already. Yeah. And then there's also this scenario where, uh, you know, you might want to play Sludge Belcher because it's better against aggro. Tiger doesn't actually stop your opponent from racing you that well. Yeah. Like, in this scenario, Tiger feels like... It's kind of meh, right? Yeah. In a lot of matchups, it helps. A, it helps a lot, though. Um, in Patron War, yeah. especially. Yeah, that's actually a really good point. This is a great target for Houndmaster buff for patrons to not get through it. Yeah. It is vulnerable to BGH once it gets Houndmastered, but I mean that's a 
a, a risk you're willing to take because you're not playing it on the board as a 7-7. Seven, seven. You're still going to get that 7 damage out of it regardless. Hello! That's a lot of pounds. He gets the Leoc. Well, Leoc doesn't really matter too much other than just straight damage. And Leoc is, would be a ridiculous amount of face damage. That would have been 15 damage. You would have put him at 4. No, he would have had to throw one hound in. He would have put him at 6. Right. I mean, he's still going to put a lot of damage out. Yeah, I mean, if he keeps just a couple, just uh, like two things on the board. Taps because there's nothing else to do here, but it looks like Oskaka is just pretty much dead. Snake Trap only gives one, but there's no way for him to really stabilize this. He can't get rid of that Tiger. He's now a defender of Argus, and so he's going to tap out. Limit Jux wins game one, and Oskaka, his losing streak continues here. Yeah, 07 now so far in the Legendary Series. Mm -hmm. And he's brought a pretty standard lineup from what we've seen. Warrior, Warlock, Druid. Yep. Limpy Jugs is switching things up a bit. I still think that Hunter is actually really yeah. strong right now. And I think all the players that have brought Hunter over the past couple of days have had more, have had a lot of success. Two of the players that brought Hunter yesterday lost before they even brought the Hunter out. So it's like... I don't know. I don't understand why more people aren't bringing it. Uh, I think, it, well, one, Hunter is kind of going through an identity crisis right now. Face Hunter has weak percentages across the board because so many classes are well equipped at defeating it. Plus, its game plan has been exposed so much that people have optimized how to play against it. Mm -hmm. A good example of why Face Hunter fell off was the same reason why Oil Rogue just fell off in popularity. People started realizing how much burst could come out from Rogue what you need to be actually doing against the board, killing out Vile Teacher is a priority, or when you keep Vile Teacher alive so that oil becomes less chance, etc. Mm -hmm. um, then the oil rogue drops in percentages a lot. Yeah. Mid-range Hunter, in the meantime, gets uh, punished a little bit, uh, but it's still pretty decent against Druid and Handlock and uh, you know a couple of other classes, but it just gets wrecked so hard by things like oil rogue and... Um, the, the Grim Patron Warrior. Yeah. Okay, I be... personally think it's fine. Hunter? Or... Like, yeah, no, Hunter's, yeah. It's, it's in a really good spot. The Hybrid Hunter is really powerful, although sometimes sometimes I just like run into the most wild things on ladder and I just lose to it. Yeah. Like, I was playing a Mech Shaman that happened to have Hex and Lightning Storm, but everything else is the same. <laughs> like, Worldling Zapomatix, Fell Reavers, Doom hammers. I was like, what? What did you take out? There's a couple of room, a couple of cards that you can take out. For Hex and Lightning Storm? It was so weird. I just was not anticipating at all. No. Probably took out Lava Burst or something like that. I saw you queuing up the Matron Shaman and I said, I tweeted out, I said, everybody that's at rank, whatever, whatever Bronin is right now, put Hex and Lightning Storm into your Mech Shaman decks to completely counter him. That explains it, DJ. Mm -hmm. You are very influential. <laughs> yeah. I would say so. All right, Druid versus Warlock. Oskaka seems to be standard mid-range Druid. Let me jokes, as we saw earlier, it is going to be sort of the demon handlock hybrid. He does run Void Callers. He does run Malganus, Dread Infernal, Draxus. I don't remember if he ran Mountain Giants or not, but I'd imagine he cut those for the Void Callers. There are cuts you can make elsewhere, like with your AoE spells or some of your early game spells. But I think he cut the Mountain Jacks. Yeah, the Jaraxxus is pretty fundamental for a Demon Lock. And starting off with the Twilight Drake is great. Sludge Boucher guarantees that you have a curve. Uh, Oskaka, in the meantime, we have to identify if, you know, what exactly spices this druid up. We know the basics. The Ancient of Lore. I mean, those are four cards you probably would usually see in a druid deck, almost in every type. Uh, what really starts flavoring is, like, does he have Ancient of Wars? Does he have the opportunity to go for any real weird tech cards? Harrison Jones was one of them. Maybe he has something else. One thing that I, I got a little sad that we have stopped seeing was I thought people were going to start gravitating towards mind control techs, and I think they're really fun to watch. I hate having them played against me, or vice versa. I hate playing with them. Most popular arena players, um, like Ratsma and 
uh, Hafu think my control tech is overpowered in Arena. It's just really good. It just stops board development in the same way it punishes people for developing the board like yeah. Unleash the Hounds did. But then they found out that you can interact with it as long as you just play around it. A random Twitch viewer in Ratsmo's chat, I will not give credit to anybody because I have no idea, said that what if my control tech, instead of mm. putting the creature onto your board when you stole it, put it into your hand? Oh, that's interesting. For sure. I really like that idea. I think it's not quite as swingy. Definitely makes it worse, and it's not even played that much in Constructed, but we'll see. Maybe it makes it even better because you get the battle cry, though. Yeah. Hmm. And it's not quite as immediate impact on the board, so it depends on the card. Seven to mana available to Oskaka. You can put out that Dr. Boom that you just drew. Ancient of Lore is more consistent with his draws, so that way you can continue to put on pressure. As the Druid player, you're trying to find ways to end the game, and drawing into your Savage Roar would be the key. I would not be upset by going for Dr. Boom, though. That is the strongest tempo play. Just by straight up damage and board presence mm -hmm. and controlling the board. His opponent played Big Game Hunter, he'd have to have Mortal Coil and Big Game Hunter, and you'd still have a 1 1 remaining. That's how powerful yeah. it would be. Uh, not to mention that Dr. Boom comes out ahead of the Twilight Drake or the Mountain Giant, so you can answer it. Yeah. That's actually. If he had a keeper here, this game would be really tough for Lemmy Jux. Just because there's no answer for that Dr. Boom. He could have, like, keepered and thrown a Dark Bomb in. He'd be really sad to see that right now. Such a power play. You know, Scott actually curves out quite nicely. He does have BGH to answer Giants. But, of course, don't think there's Giants in this deck. Where shall I strike? But I'm not sure. If, he probably watched earlier. Whoa! Own face. Yeah, there's there's no reason why you should try bother trading with the Drake. It's just gonna make it awkward and inefficient with the boom bot damage. Void caller is optimistic. He's really hoping this boom bot lands on the void caller for four damage. That is incredibly optimistic. And he goes face for three! No, yeah, he's dead. Wow! GG. The game is over just like that! That's ridiculous. I know you're you're excited, TJ, but I think that was really sloppy play. Like I, I mean, it's one of those things where it's really optimistic to try expect those things happening, but it could be one of those things where you're expecting to lose anyways because Doctor yeah. Boom got so far ahead and did 14 plus damage to you that you just give up. But there were many other plays that you could have explored. Sludge Belcher. Sludge Belcher. You know, uh, at, at least the T Kill bot. Yeah. But it's like. Well, let me mortal coil and try to see if this goes hit the one and three, and then the one and four in that to get Malganus, so I can maybe challenge it. But even if he got Malganus, it just trades into Doctor Boom. Doctor Boom gets like an easy kill. Yeah, and so it's one of those things where it's like, I think he he conceded essentially. Mm -hmm. Um, and the reason why you know maybe I chose a little bit too harsh of a word said sloppy, but it's like if you lose with this deck, you're gonna have to sh play it again. So you don't want to show information. Mm -hmm. So don't don't toss it out there unnecessarily and just make like a, a bad play um, if that's the case. Unless he legitimately thought it was a good play and then there's a lot of like lines of thought with it and I'm just not seeing it. Yeah. But yeah. I think the only line of thought is hoping he doesn't have direct damage and or and or hoping that the bomb hits, which is very unlikely. Right. But there's a lot of other stuff. There's Savage Roar. There's, uh, you know, the for just this straight up force of nature. He needed two damage. Yeah. He could have keeper the like, grow to the, the face. Grow to the face yeah. would have been fine. Yeah. Yeah. No heal, no taunt defensive. There's no uh, removal played. It's just uh, not very, very strong at that scenario. Yeah. Well, both players have Warlock remaining. Uh, Oskaka has Warrior, and Lemijix has Rogue. So we are going to see um, Warlock versus Warlock, but it's nowhere near a mirror match because Lemijix, of course, has the Demon Hand Lock. Oskaka does have the Zoo Warlock. Now. I'm not as sure with this one. Traditionally, Handlock has a decent matchup against mm -hmm. Dew. Um, but this isn't a traditional Handlock, in a sense. How, what do you think about Demon Handlock as opposed to like more Mountain Giant? Right. I think there's some scenarios where it can be better, but for the most part, the ones with Mountain Giants are just way better at handling the aggression. Um, because 
you generally have a lot more ways to interact with the board, right? Because mm -hmm. you're playing, like, the ones with Mountain Giants nowadays, I believe, play double Mortal Coils. Yeah. Um, which are really big against Zoo. They play double Hellfire, they play double Shadow Flames. Yeah. I'm not sure about the Demon Lock deck, but if it plays similar to that, then I think it's fine. This one plays double Mortal Coil, but I think it only plays... Um, we've only seen one of each of the AoE spells. Right. Uh, which are actually a pretty big deal. Because if you get to a point where you don't draw into like a Hellfire or Shadow Flame when you need it, yeah. it can be pretty rough. The one thing that is nice about uh, Demon Lock is that you generally have better uses for cards. Like uh, Void Caller, for example, is always going to be live over Mountain Giants. And then you have Implosion, I believe, in this deck. Implosion is really effective against fighting back for the board, too. Yeah. So there are tools available, and it's not impossible by any means. In fact, um, I would date, I think that Demon Lock is slightly favored if you play it optimally and you get good draws. Mm -hmm. Well, actually, probably really favored if you get the good draws. But let me just let's pick up Shadow Flame. So he has AOE available. Do you do you develop the egg or the? I guess Hunter Keeper is just more damage. If you want the most damage, you play Flame It, but that f fills out the curve so for the following turn. Generally speaking, you want to play the highest mana as much as possible, even yep. if you fill in the mana. Like, if you had two one drops, you'd still go for the two drop, just so that you can play those one mana minions when it fills in as opposed to. More flexible. Yeah. Right, the Ring Farsi will trade into Knife Juggler. This is like an argument for the Haunted Creeper because it does more damage, it stabilizes the board, and also gives you potentially more juggles. But I wouldn't beat myself up if I was Oskaka. I think you can just trade and play the uh, M Gang Boss. Or maybe you can play M Gang Boss first, uh, first to see if you juggle. I wonder. There's no way you can actually kill off this Farseer just through sheer Knife Juggler RNG. Unless you um, Should tap like, into, like, like Abuse of Sergeant. Mm, but even that would be... Abuse of Sergeant would only do two damage. You'd have to rely on the juggle hitting the Earth Ring Farseer once the Nerubian spawned. I just like the M-Gang boss play. Yeah. M-Gang boss seems to be the most resilient to stuff. <laughs> I guess you're not too worried about like Hellfire because you're protecting the board with. Wow, those are perfect juggles. Go straight to the face. Perfect juggles. <laughs> he juggled that perfectly. He needed precisely those two hits to kill me. There was nothing I could do. Dan is the master of this copy guy's pasta. RNG is crazy. Yeah, man. I've uh, I've memorized a lot of the bosses. It became one of those things. Some people, you know, they uh, they remember important historical events. Other people can recite pi to the thousandth digit. Me? I remember the dank memes. It's a valuable skill. You're living. I actually do write on my resume. I know you're kind of like mocking me right now, but please refrain from triggering me. <laughs> Silence conveniently onto that uh, Twilight Drake and dealing six damage. And that is one of the hardest boards to AoE that I've seen in a while. Well, he did pop the Haunted Creeper, I guess it's a bit harder. He can AoE it over two turns. It's the call of vo Void Caller, which summons another Void Caller. And this is because his opponent just used an Iron Beak Owl. Skaka gets a implosion, so I think he can start interpreting whether or not his opponent has AoE to clear the board, but he does have Shadow Flame and Hellfire. Shadow Flame would not be live because he doesn't have a minion, so and that'd be coming next turn. Hellfire would probably have been played, but he had Twilight Drake, which makes sense. Followed up by a Void Caller. So if Alskaka is dialed in, he might feel like, well, he has AoE. I better save this implosion until after AoE. Mm -hmm. Or he could be trying to race damage and say, I don't care if you have AoE, I'm just going to try to race as much damage as possible. Why would he even trade in here if he wants to use Implosion? Because for every 1-1 one, one that you trade in, that's like one damage that you're wasting anyway. Right. Because you're effectively just throwing the 1-1s one into nothing. That's a lot of damage. 3, 5, 7, 8, 12 next turn. 
And if um, the Derubian pops out, that's a really big deal too. Not going to hold back at all here. Can't really afford to when you're playing Zoo against Handlock, unless you know you have a lot of birds from your hand, but... Oh, man, that's... That's oh, that's a pretty decent draw, actually. The only problem is that he doesn't have Molten Giant to pair with it. The second Iron Peak Owl is really useful to make sure that he can handle anything else coming out in the future, Defender of Argus, but he's got a pretty nice board clear here. Oh, nope, just a little bit short, actually. Hmm... Yeah, just a tiny bit short. So he ends up uh, shadow flaming the two two the two one instead. He doesn't have Whoa. to get demon. Ah, uh, yeah. But you're not even you're not even at lethal yet. So he's not even not even at lethal. I don't even. Okay. Whoa. Now we're talking. All right. Now we are talking. What do we got a one and three? Mm, yes. It's either that or you implosion, but I think you just go for it. Ah! Are you serious? Wow. Come on. That is brutal. That's like four okay. times in a row. Okay. Okay. Okay, there oh. has to be something up with that. Like, there's there's just no way, right? The law of soul fires. I refuse to believe that just happened. Yeah. And, like, if that ends up being the reason Limux wins this game. Chucky is the only player. Just Whoa! The <laughs> there it is. Justice! <laughs> yeah. Let me Jux. He looks a little bit frustrated, but... He kind of got a life that he didn't even deserve in the first place. Well, you came crashing down hard on that sentence. Uh, I didn't really know what to say besides <laughs> deserve, but that sounds really brutal. It's fine. Just say justice and just let it go. Let me jokes. You deserve yeah. all the wins that you get, my friend. The Dark Bomb was a really important draw, but like you have to imagine the thing. Like, oh, I got unlucky with the Soul Fire. I got lucky with the draw. One of those things where it kind of didn't matter, but it was always fun to see that. I have a question, DJ. Do you okay. ever think that it's like, you know, it's it's technically it's technically still random if you select from a pool like a jar of candies, yeah, or like you know like a like a like the NBA draft lottery for example. Uh, it's still random who wins the draft pick, but it's weighted towards the teams that do worse. Yeah. So I really wonder if it's still truly random, or if Blizzard's like, you know what? It's truly random, but if another soul fire is in it, we'll make it like. A bump up like an extra few percentage points, but mm. it's still random. Because I feel that way about ridiculous cars like Lore Walker Cho and, uh, and, uh, what's the other one? Doomsayer and Mana Ray. Like the really problematic two drops off the Podger. I'm like, well, maybe it's not 1.4%. Maybe it's like 3%. Yeah. And everything else is just bumped down a little bit. I identify better with candy I, this is my, I'm putting my tinfoil hat on and, and putting a conspiracy theory because this is completely not true, uh, as far as I know. Yeah. But it doesn't feel that random to me, TJ. Okay. Well, we've actually seen okay, well, five cool. soul fires. Okay, this is a statistic. Yeah. Five soul fires used when another soul fire was in the hand. Four of which discard another soul fire. Right. Uh, four of those were either one and three or less. So one and three, one and two. And then one of them was, was a one, one and seven. And, yeah, that was one and eight. Or one and eight. One and eight yeah. or one and seven. Um, three of those happened to lead paint. And lead paint, all of which he discarded second soul fire. One of them happened to Chalky, and Chalky was the only player to defy the laws of the soul fire mm -hmm. and uh, discarded something else. And then, of course, we just saw Oskaka, who was denied of a very juicy lethal. Yeah, but you end up getting it anyways. So mm -hmm. you're just not even going to address my conspiracy. It's cool. No, I, I think so, it's, it's a valid concern. That's the, all I'm giving Blizzard, you. Blizzard, hire this man. <laughs> Well, we're moving Oskaka on. Oskaka has one class remaining. It's Warrior. Warrior versus Rogue. Grim Patient Warrior, I'm going to guess. Yeah, but if he's wrong, and if you're wrong and if Limitrex is wrong, he just walked through a bad matchup. If yeah. he's Control Warrior, he just willingly took on Oil Rogue versus Control Warrior. 
There's always the argument that you got to win with everything anyway, Dan. Yeah, it's true. So you might as well just play whatever you feel like. But yeah, you're right. This is Control Warrior. What? And it's not. Yeah. Commanding shout! It's all right. My man. So somehow Limajux was able to predict the Grand Patient Warrior correctly. It's uh, one of those things where you, if you're right, you look really smart. If you're wrong, you look a little silly. But in this case, Limajux looks really smart. I like Commanding Shout almost as much as I like Cheesecake. And that's a lot. Okay. Well, you didn't really clear, you didn't quantify that sentence. This is, you know, TJ, I don't know if you like cheesecake or not. Do you like cheesecake? I love cheesecake. Cheesecake is my jam. I have to clarify: Swedish cheesecake or American cheesecake? Uh, well, I haven't had Swedish cheesecake, so I don't know if I like it or not. Neither have I. But I'm a visual. What do they call that? Uh, learner? Me. Not learner, but eater. <laughs> Because I'm an, I'm an oral eater. <laughs> That's how I eat. <laughs> that sounds so dirty. <laughs> Through my ears. I don't even know how to respond to that. But yeah. I, that, I said after reading the entire Wikipedia page about Swedish cheesecake earlier, I felt like I was tasting it, you know? Like the, those, those Wikipedia writers, <laughs> they know how to get to me. TJ's actually trying, uh, he's been telling me that he's been trying to, you know, get back on the fitness train and whatnot. He's been running, like, miles every day. I didn't know it got that bad. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that you're reading Wikipedia entry articles about cheesecake that you feel like you can taste it. Mm -hmm. Fun fact, that Dan. That is a brutal life, man. The only reason why I run multiple miles every single day is so I can eat lots of cheesecake when I get back home. But cheese or Orally. <laughs> orally, <laughs> Yeah. I take my cheese. <laughs> I can't even say it. Then say it in Swedish <laughs> using Oskaka. He has the death bite, which is important to shut down the Violet Teacher, one of the most important uh, cards to fight against a deck that normally combos, but against a deck that primarily draws this much off of the Acolytes. Oh, well, man. hello there. Battle Rage into the Execute. That is great. Yes. Value Rage. <clears throat> and that is not what Limitrix wanted to see. He's going to have to play Vile Teacher number two. He's going to get some more bad news that it gets chopped down immediately. Unless he wants to play Pilot Shredder. This is oh. a very creature heavy hand, which I think is a good thing. You don't like creature heavy hands? Well, sometimes uh, spell heavy hands are good. Gotcha. Um. There are some matchups. I think Zoo is a good right. good uh, matchup to have a spell heavy hand. Um, even like Priest. Um, you want certain spells, like you want Sprit in your early hand. Just because the game is going to be slow, you know it is. Yeah. You have a lot of time to draw on a thing. But especially considering some of your creatures are liabilities later on. Like Vile Teacher, I'm not sure how good that would be putting down later in the game with Grim Patron. Because you don't want to use spells. Because those 1-1 one, one tokens are just the prime targets for those Grim Patrons to reproduce. He's got, he's got Azure Drake as well, by the way. Azure Drake was like first being experimented by guys like uh, Fu Oliver back in China. But um, eventually it just felt like no mission vendor did everything better. It fit like the, the charge. Yeah. Of the Warsong Commander, it got the draw on a curve because the the four mana slot really has nothing else except Death Spite. Um, you know, Azure Drake is a little clunky, so he has two of them. <clears throat> that makes it really interesting. It feels like this is very cycle oriented. Yeah. And very all in on a huge combo of the Grim Patron. I have to imagine he doesn't run cards like Slam. Mm -hmm. uh, he has to be running Inner Rage, because that's what Azure Drake really thrives on, like an Azure Drake Inner Rage play. Also Whirlwind. Uh, Whirlwind. Control Warriors actually used to put Azure Drake in their decks. He might be running only one... Um, I wonder. Only one... Battle, uh, not Battle Rage. Uh, only one... What am I, card am I thinking of? Armorsmiths. Okay, yeah. Armorsmiths definitely are more optional, so to speak. Yeah. Especially if everyone's running Handlock. What's Armorsmith going to do? Yeah. Armorsmith was 
is stronger on the ladder because you face more cards like Hunter and, right. and Zoo, where sometimes an Armorsmith on turn one, or even like Freeze Mage, when Freeze Mage was popular, it was another win condition where you get ridiculous amounts of armor. But I do agree that it's not quite as good. Yeah, that's true. Especially since Commanding Shout's so good. You can take in an Armorsmith, plop in a Commanding Shout, and all of a sudden your handlock win rate improves by like 10%. Yeah. Which is fair. pretty significant. Well, you've got so many cards as the Rogue. You'd like to start shutting down the board a little bit. There's not really that many clean plays that I see right now. Everything involves a little bit of, uh, like, either floating uh, a mana or your opponent ends up having a minion on board, which is not preferable. You can Lotheb and Deadly Poison. Lotheb is still kind of meh because the opponent's coming on turn 7, right? It's yeah. like you want to shut him down before you can start doing like big combos with the whirlwinds on Grim Patron turns. Yeah. I guess it's still his best course of action. I, I guess Violet Teacher doesn't really have anything to do. Violet Teacher. I don't know. It might like not come down. When are you going to use Violet Teacher? Just as a 3 5 and not use any spells? Could be. When your opponent plays Lothab or something. Yeah. No way, though. Not in this deck. A lot of cycle again. But the important thing is that Oskaka is going to be shutting down this Lothab and setting up the Death Bite, which is so scary. Not to mention, this does end up being relevant, but there's a lot of pecking damage being done by the Gnomish Inventor. Just like constantly nibbling mm -hmm. away at the hell. That's like the second or third attack it's done. Yeah. And that starts adding up because as soon as Oskaka gets things like Commanding Shout and with the, the whatever minion he ends up using it with, either Grim Patron or Frothing Berserker, there is going to be some major wombo combo. Oh, yeah. So he needs to, like, set up his turn. Limidrex here. Not only does he need to address what's on the board, but he needs to, like, set up a turn. Next turn, to deal with crazy shenanigans with mm -hmm. Despite. So, like, a, a, set up a weapon here. Make sure that you are in a comfortable position to be able to Blade Flurry any possible threats. But he's playing so conservative. Like, Oil Rogue's supposed to benefit off of grabbing tempo. And if you play really conservative in general... You're just giving a lot of time for the warrior to accumulate their combo. I would actually recommend that rogues have to look at this similar to how they look at the Miracle Mirror. Yeah. Because a lot of times, whoever was able to dictate the health and the tempo of the board was able to really snowball that to a victory. And sure, you're really afraid of the Grim Patron, but like that VOD teacher there sat for a long time. Just, I mean, why not Why not put the VOD teacher just as a 3-5 instead of a 3-3 here? Yeah, that, that SI agent... His battle cry did damage to the face. Yeah. So. You might need that on a Grim Patron for, th that's a 3-2. Yeah, and Vala Teacher, SI Agent, I think, is even a more flexible card as the game goes on, because that extra two damage could be the difference between cleaning up, like, a Frothing Berserker or well, uh, a Grim Patron. What this does do with the SI-7 is keep Vala Teacher for a post, like, he can Vala Teacher flurry if his opponent just decided to go off on this turn. Yeah. But I can't imagine so. Just two Frothing Berserkers. He just needs to hit Thorson and get a really cheap hand with all these crazy combos. Two Inner Rages. Is that a full 10 hand? No, it's not. So he can, he can just pass and let his opponent deal with this Drake. He might be setting up a... like a one-turn kill. Next turn, he's got two Frothing Berserkers. Warsong Commander. And a Warsong Commander. So Father Berserker by itself is base 4 damage. Mm -hmm. Each uh, Inner Rage is 3, Is three, but the other Berserker gets a so four. 4. So it's 8 damage. So, many uh, so that's 4 plus 8 is 12, plus this uh, attack from the weapon is uh, 16. Mm -hmm. And the Whirlwind effect would be at least 3. Oh, at least 3. For each. For each, so that's 6. So six so that's 22. 22. That's what it is. Oh my god. Wow. Oskaka has actually calculated lethal for next turn based oh. off that. Holy bejeebus. That's assuming he sees that. 
Uh, and that's assuming his opponent doesn't heal this turn. But how can you how can you make that assumption? I guess you can because your opponent's holding a bajillion cards. Yeah. I may or may not have uh, ballpark that number of cards. Mm -hmm. It's at least one if, card. If Lemex doesn't play the antique heal, oh! he dies. That is game over. Oskaka is going to the finals. Doesn't matter if he prep eviscerates. That's got to be exact lethal, right? Oskaka is calculating yeah. the damage in his hand. And he's. Is he not even. Alright. He didn't even clear the Azure Drake, so that's four damage overkill. Yeah, that's that's that's, that's even more than four damage overkill because we didn't calculate oh, the fact the that there'd be two minions surviving on top. Yeah, there's just way too much damage. This is twenty six plus an extra four damage. That's thirty damage that he could do. All right, well, Limit Jux uh, gave it his best effort, but this rogue got outpaced way too easily by the card draw, and Oskaka bowls over the oil rogue. Wow. Oh my goodness. So that's going to mean Oskaka versus Tom, 60229. Two very strong players uh, trying to fight for a ticket to California from different corners of the world. A great ending to that series. Really fun stuff. I really like Patron Warrior. I know a lot of people still you know, are getting used to the fact that it's a, it's a viable combo deck that's cheap and uh, hard to play, but... You know, get over it, nerds. It's gonna be a, it's a sick deck. I love it. That wasn't even Patron Warrior. That was Death Spite Frothing Berserker Warrior. Right. That's true. No Grim Patron in that whatsoever. It was just straight up Warzone Commander. This is what yeah. happens when you fix the card that everyone wants to play with. It's fun stuff. Yeah. Well, I mean, the threat of Grim Patrons forces people to play differently around cards right. like Frothing Berserker. So, was there any card in that that involved any um, Black Rock Mountain in that game? From um, uh, from the warrior side, I don't believe. I don't think so. so. No, so it's just a classic. So it's deck. just a classic deck that people somehow found works okay. And you think even if he had prepped, eviscerated the Azure Drake, mm -hmm. he still would have died. That's right. So pretty crazy stuff. Uh, but we are moments away from jumping into the final. But let's take a look at the bracket one more time and what we've seen today. Uh, in the first semifinal, we saw Maz uh, lose to Tom six zero two two nine. Uh, three to one, so he qualified for the final there. And Oskaka just took out Lumi Jux, three to one as well. So the final is set: Tom six zero two two nine, the Taiwanese player versus Oskaka, Swedish player named after a delectable Swedish delicacy. And uh, I think it's going to be a pretty good final. It's going to be a great final. I think both these players are high caliber players. I could imagine them even going really far in the actual lane itself. So I'm looking forward to it. Alrighty, well, the final of the Redemption Tournament Group D and the final of the Redemption Tournament in general, we will crown the eighth player who will be joining us at the Season 2 Legendary Series Land Finals. Oskaka versus Tom, 60229.